Hello and welcome to Chapel of the Woods Bible Church. This uh, service is recorded and presented in accordance with our CCLI license. <clears throat> We've waited for this day, we're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here, you're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, the mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Your presence in this place, your glory on our face, we're looking to the sky. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now, Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, the mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us. Show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. We want to see you. We want to see you. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. The mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Father God, thank you for this day, and thank you for this time where even though we're not gathered together physically, we are gathered together spiritually in you, Lord. We do look forward to the day where we can gather again together physically uh, in each other's presence as a community. Until then, we uh, just thank you, Lord, for your loving hand your protection, and the spirit that binds us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this next song is not a post-exilic prophet, but Micah is guilty by association and being a pre-exilic prophet. And he wrote these wonderful words in his book, chapter 6, 8. He has shown thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of me. He has shown thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of me. But to do justly and love mercy and walk humbly with our God. But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Good morning. Our missionary of the week is Steve and Debbie Coles. Uh, there's a they wrote rather lengthy. Uh, update for us this week. I think we sent out a link to it already. Uh, if not, uh, get in touch with us and we can get it to you. Um, a lot of their concern uh, is obviously with the treatment, uh, the catch treatment for Debbie and just uh, how their daily lives are changing uh, because of that. So just be in prayer for that and also Steve as he keeps up with his work with the police force there. Uh, he's had a couple of instances with where an officer uh, you know, lost his temper and so uh, just to be in prayer for them as they uh, work through that together and, and see if he can keep his job, that kind of thing. So um, he's still continuing to, to try to support the police ministry and also Debbie and her um, medical situation at the moment. So you can pray for both of them in that, uh, in both of those areas. Um, we are finishing up Revelation most likely this week. We've got one chapter to go. It's been a, 
interesting series on Wednesday nights. We are still doing that virtually, and uh, so we're going to finish that up this Wednesday, and we'll figure out what we're going to do next. I don't know yet, so uh, we'll, we'll figure something out. So anyway, just thankful for technology, and I'm able to meet uh, with those guys on Wednesday as well. So uh, let's see. Other than that, uh, things are starting to look up uh, in terms of uh, things opening up, so we'll see if we can meet soon, and that's our hope, uh, our passion is to, to be together again as a family at some point soon, so we look forward to that, and uh, in the meantime, we will get back to worshiping virtually together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found, rest in his righteousness alone, but less to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, whenever you're watching this. We thank you for uh, joining us, and uh, we do want to mention that uh, today uh, is generally when we do communion, the first uh, Sunday of the month. Uh, we're not going to do virtual communion because uh, personally I don't think you can really do virtual communion. Um, we encourage you to do f communion as a family if you have uh, grape juice, wine, bread, uh, to, to uh, do communion as a family. Uh, hopefully the first uh, time that we're back in community, uh, we'll have communion here and, and do a communion together. Um, we're in a difficult time uh, today, obviously, with uh, the virus and difficulties in, in our country and in the whole world, actually. Uh, it, it's very similar to the time that we're going to talk about today uh, in the time what's called the post-exilic prophets. And uh, Babylon uh, was a, a, a city in which the Jews, and uh, basically uh, Judah and Benjamin were still there, and then Cyrus allowed them to come back to the land. And when they came back to the land, about 50,000 people came back uh, with uh, Zerubbabel and, and uh, uh, Joshua, a different Joshua than uh, in, in the um, Exodus. But um, they came back and they were excited about starting to build a temple and starting to, to do the worship that they were required by God to do. Uh, in Jerusalem. And so they started the temple. Then they had some difficulties. They had some distractions. They had people that were uh, against them or sending letters back and saying they were just rebellious people and so forth. And so it, they got discouraged. They got fearful. And so they stopped building the temple. And there was two prophets that came from Babylon uh, back to Jerusalem with them. Uh, called uh, one was uh, Haggai and one was Zechariah, and God called them to encourage the people to move forward in rebuilding the temple, in rebuilding the place and where God resided with them, uh, the place that they could go and worship Him together. Now, who was Haggai? We're going to talk first about Haggai. He was uh, the only thing we know about him is he's the prophet Haggai. Uh, he was probably. Uh, somebody that actually went to Babylon and came back. So he was likely older, um, 70, 80 plus, And he probably saw the temple that was destroyed. And when he came back, uh, he, was, he was older. Uh, the second prophet, Zechariah, was probably younger. He was born in Babylon and came back with the 50,000 that came back. So these were the first prophets after the exile. Haggai was the first prophet. Uh, he uh, 
prophesied for four months during the reign of Darius I in 520 BC. Uh, that's when they started rebuilding the temple again. And so uh, the main point for the book of Haggai is rebuild the temple. The word of the Lord came to the prophet Haggai. And so you see God's word coming. It's not Haggai just looking at, out at the situation and saying, hey, the temple looks kind of puny. In fact, it's not even there. In fact, that the, the foundations are a little bit. He didn't, he didn't just look at it. He received a word of the Lord that he was speaking to the people of Judea and the people of uh, Benjamin. And so in Ezra, the historical book, Ezra 5, 1 and 2, he says, Now Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the prophet, a descendant of Edo, prophesied to the Jews in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God of Israel who was over them. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Jezoadak, set to work to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were there with them, supporting them. Again, it's just two chapters long. And essentially what he starts out with says, Y'all are having trouble. Y'all are in difficulty. You, you're fearful. You're discouraged. And you are in trouble. And the reason why you're in trouble, because you're not doing what God said. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, The time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while the house remains in ruin? Now, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You know, they were, again, they were receiving pushback and difficulty uh, because they originally tried to start the temple. But now they had kind of sat back and rested, so to speak. They were being selfish. The, the word paneled houses... That they were building their own houses, their paneled houses. The, the word, the same word for paneled houses or the paneling used was the material for the temple. So what Haggai and God is saying, you know, you guys are using like temple materials to build your own houses and you don't care about my house. You don't care about me living with you. And, and why is that? Because their priority of life They were selfish. They were only looking at themselves, not God's temple, not God's activities. And then everything looked small and bad. You know, we remember, our grandparents remember the old temple. It was really great. But look at this puny little foundation that, our, you know, that, with, that they started building 10 or 12 years ago. Everything looked so small and bad. We remember things a lot bigger. Now, a lot of times we remember things bigger. If you go back to a house, maybe you... You lived in when you were little and you moved away. You go back to that. You thought it was really big. You go back and it's pretty small. And, and that, there's that aspect to it. But they were just kind of saying, you know, well, it's, it's bad. We'll just leave it like it is. And Haggai says, no, don't do that. But now be strong, Zerubbabel declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord and work. For I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. And note what they did. If we look at Ezra in the history, when they started to rebuild the temple, they started listening to Haggai and Zechariah, and what they did first is built an altar. They started the altar. They started the place where they would come to God in worship. The altar hadn't even been built yet. Just some foundation had been built. And when they, 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 they were encouraged by the prophets, by God, they built the altar. They started worshiping God. They started getting their relationship with God first. Not their selfishness and paying attention to their own stuff and not paying attention to the Lord's stuff, to God's stuff, to God's uh, covenant with them even. <clears throat> Do not fear. They built that altar. And then say, you know, in the future, know this, that you will be victorious and that 
God will be victorious. The word of the Lord came to Haggai a second time, and on the 24th day of the month, tell Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, I am going to shake the heavens and the earth. I will overturn royal thrones and shatter the power of the foreign kingdoms. I will overthrow chariots and their drivers. Horses and their riders will fall, each by the sword of his brother. What God is saying to the people in the future, I will fight for you. In the future, all this stuff that you're afraid of, all this stuff that these people that are sending letters off to Babylon, I will overcome all of that. I'm in charge. I will overcome. And then the second prophet, Zechariah, who's he? Again, he's born in Babylon. Uh, he's a, a Levite, and so he's both a priest and a prophet. Uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel were both priests and prophets, and so... Um, Zechariah is also a priest and prophet. He returned to the land with Haggai with about 50,000 others. Uh, he's younger. He had a longer ministry. It's in two parts. His uh, prophecy is kind of in two parts, and some people think the two parts are different people, uh, but there is also a unity there. Uh, I don't think so. But <clears throat> he basically prophesies by vision. He began with eight Visions, we're not going to go through all of them, but there's vision of horsemen and myrtle trees and four horns and uh, measuring Jerusalem and Joshua the high priest. Uh, it basically, uh, he talks about the branch to come, uh, the golden lampstand, uh, the flying scroll, and so forth. And, and so scholars, and I'm not a scholar, and I'm certainly not pretending to be one, don't really know, can't really say exactly what all these are talking about. Uh, but God is at work. The branch, the Messiah, who will build the real temple of God, is coming. Uh, he then goes on to talk about a a message concerning fasting and obedience. And this is something actually Jesus picks up later. Basically what was happening is that people were pretending to be worshiping. They were fasting and saying, we're great because we obey God and we fast and we do all these things that we're supposed to do. But Zechariah says, no, you're really not. Your attitude is not what it should be. And Jesus says the same thing. People are fasting. The priests are fasting. They're saying, look at me. I'm so great because I'm fasting. Don't you look up to me. And Jesus says, you get your reward here. And so Zechariah is, again, encouraging the people of uh, Judah to rebuild the temple so that, that God would indeed dwell with them. And he speaks of the coming Jesus who will also dwell with them. Zechariah has, has various messianic passages concerning Jesus. First of all, first of all the one that we um, generally talk about on Palm Sunday. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Again, that's uh, a, a prediction of Jesus coming into Jerusalem as king. Uh, he was betrayed for, with 30 pieces of silver. Zechariah 11, 12, and 13, I told them, if you think it best, give me my pay, but if not, keep it. So they paid me 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said to me, throw it to the potter and the handsome price at which they valued me. So I took the 30 pieces and threw them down. Uh, again, Judas betrayed Jesus with 30 pieces of silver, throwing him down when he realized what he'd done. He will be pierced, and I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one that they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. The soldiers, of course, pierced the, side, pierced the side of Jesus, and I think this speaks specifically later of Jews that are going to see Jesus as he really is, as the Messiah, as the one that they pierced, the one who was coming to save them. And he is coming again. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from the east to the west, forming a great valley with half the mountains moving north and half moving south. His return, as he, he was speaking with his disciples right before he ascended into heaven to his father, <clears throat> He spoke to his disciples, was giving them uh, last instructions about sharing, uh, witnessing about him to the nations. And then he ascended up into heaven and an angel came and said, why are, why are you looking? He will come back in the same way that he left. And 
That, that's out of Zechariah. I think he's accessing this prophecy from Zechariah that when God, Jesus comes back, when God brings Jesus back, when Jesus comes back, he will send at the Mount of Olives. Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament. It's also the last of the post-exilic prophets, unless you take Joel. We don't know where Joel exactly sits. We'll probably talk about him just a little bit more next week if we do the whole sweep of Old Testament, big idea. But Malachi, who was he? His name can be a name or it can be a reference to the meaning. Uh, the meaning, Malachi means my messenger. It's not in the form of a name. Uh, so some people think that it's not necessarily a person that they're speaking of, Malachi, but the message, um, although it would be the only prophetic book that didn't have a name. Uh, so, But he is about, I, I take it, I've gone back and forth, I take it to Malachi, a person. Uh, it was about 100 years after they first returned, after uh, uh, Haggai and uh, Zerubbabel and the people returned and then uh, probably you know, not quite that long before after the uh, wall was built by Nehemiah the security of, of, of the wall was built uh, but it was it was later it was it had a generation at least had passed and life was hard uh, probably harder than before they were under the the thumb of, of Persia uh, Judah was wandering as a people, not wandering around, but wandering from their God, from Yahweh. And, and Malachi comes and says, you need to repent. There's sin among you. Uh, there, and the people were sinning, but he also focuses on their leaders, the priests, the religious leaders. In uh, Malachi 2, for instance, he says, and now you priests, this warning is for you. If you do not listen and you do not resolve to honor my name, says the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse on you and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I've already cursed them because you have not resolved to honor me. You know, so, sometimes God gets real strong with what he says because the priests and the leaders of the people were not honoring their God because they were focused on other things, specifically themselves. He says, I will curse you. It's that important. Um, the sins of the people, the sins of all of the people of Judah, he, he, a few of them, they question God's love. He says, I have loved you, says the Lord, but you ask, how have you loved me? God answers, I loved you because I chose you. I chose Jacob, not Esau. And we can get talk about choosing and predestination and all of those things. I'm not sure that's what, what Malachi is really focused on here. What he's focused on is that God loved them. He chose them. And as a believer in Jesus Christ, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you can know God chose you. God loves you because God chose you. And he says, this is how you know that I love you. I chose you. He starts out with that. Don't question God's love. In this difficult time, they were in a difficult time. They're saying, you know, how can God love us in all this difficulty and problems and stuff that we have? And they said, God loves you. Don't question God's love. He chose you. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, He chose you. They refused to honor God. Again, back to the, to the, the priests specifically, but they were examples to the people. A son honors his father and a slave his master. If I am a father... Where is the honor due me? If I'm a master, where is the respect due me, says the Lord God Almighty. It is you priests who show contempt for my name, but you ask. They, the, the people, the priests especially, did not honor God again. This is, the, this is actually before the other passage we read about priests, but he's, the focus is the leaders of the people were not honoring God. They also redefined goodness. You have wearied the Lord with your words. How have we wearied him, you ask? By saying, all who do evil are good in the eyes of the Lord, and he is pleased with them. Or where is the God of justice? Basically, what they're saying is that good is evil, evil's good. Now, we haven't had that today. We don't have that aspect today. When, when we look at the culture as a whole, what do we look at? What do we see? People saying, Evil is good. 
people saying, hey, it's okay, you watch TV, you watch movies, you watch other things, you watch your friends. It's, it's okay if somebody who is not committed in a relationship to live together, it's okay. It's okay. It's good. No, it's not. It's not good. And, and you see it in other ways and where you say, you know, God's not, God doesn't care about it. You know, those, those things happen and God doesn't deal with it. He will. They rob God. Will a mere mortal rob God, yet you rob me? But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, there, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing there will not be enough room to store it. Now, this is the, the life verse for a lot of pastors and um, televangelists, I think. Not just kidding. But what was going on? They were living under the law. For them, God expected them to bring tithes into the warehouse, into the, the place that, that would, uh, where they worship God. They, they were to bring offerings. Some, some were offerings for poor people. Some were other offerings during, during the year. Over a seven-year period, it was probably a, almost a 33% tithe. They weren't doing that. And what, what did God say about that? You are robbing me. Who do you think you are? A mere mortal, thinking that you can rob from God and not have consequences in your life. Now, we are not under the law. Now, now why were they disobedient? Because they were selfish. What were they doing? Spending it on themselves. It wasn't just because they were trying to live. It's because they were spending it up on, on themselves. They were disobedient. They were selfish about their own houses. Now, again, we're not under the law. But if everything for us, as we look at our budget, is spent on us, there's a question about where our priorities are. And I'm not saying it needs to go to a church or this church or whatever but if it's all spent on us, maybe there's a robbing of God. And then there's a jewel. This is one of, the, my, one of my more actual favorite verses out of the prophets. Then those who feared God and talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard, and a scroll of remembrance was written in His presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored His name. On the day when I asked as the Lord... Almighty, they will be my treasured possessions. I will spare them just as a father has compassion and spares, spares his son who serves him. And you will again see the distinction between the righteousness and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. He says that there, are, there is sin, in, and I see sin, and I see unrighteousness, and I see injustice, and I see, I, I see you robbing me and robbing others, and, and I but I also see jewels among you, treasured possessions. They have feared the Lord. There's a relationship between God. Of, of, they look at God and they understand who He is and there's that fear and there's a, a worship of Him. And then they talk with each other. It's very interesting. This is, very, this is part of the, the Old Testament. They were in community. They communed with one another. They talked with each other about the relationship with God, I think, of what is going on and, and, and how they can, can, can do the covenantal things that they are supposed to do. Not just the law, but be examples to the nations. And the Lord, when He sees this, the Lord listens to their prayer and he hears them, and a scroll of remembrance in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord. This, this scroll, it, you see all the way through the Old Testament, and then all the way through the New Testament, is God is keeping track. Uh, fortunately, if we're believers, all our sin, God erases and puts to the, you know, as, as far as the east is to the west, but there is a reality that there's a, a scroll in which names are written, and if he sees and if we have that relationship in, with him and with community, he looks at that and, and honor his name, there, we are treasured possessions. We are jewels. 
and we are saved. And, and you will see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who don't. And so you see the people that are jewels, they fear God, they talk with each other, they honor His name, and they serve Him. And those are kind of common themes about people who are God's people all the way through the Old Testament, all the way through the New Testament, if we serve God. Again, there's always two types of people. There's those types that fear God, there's those types that have relationship with God and do His will, and there's those who don't. And there's a distinction between where they will go. There's a distinction between the bad, the faithless, <clears throat> who he doesn't want near him or his people, and there's a distinction between the good and the faithful who are his valuable possession forever. And hopefully we are his valuable possession forever as we have faith in Jesus, his son. And a messenger is coming. The day of the Lord is coming. I will send my messenger who will prepare a way before me. Again, this is the last book of the Old Testament. This is probably a reference to John the Baptist who prepares the way for the Messiah, Jesus. And then, then Jesus comes. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord God Almighty. So he is prophesying Jesus, John the Baptist coming before Jesus, the Messiah. <clears throat> See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day. I think this is future, this by that great and dreadful day. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to, to parents, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. Again, this could be uh, Elijah, Elisha, uh, not, not sure exactly who this is. There's a lot of argument, but it looks like a coming time where there will be somebody that, that, that's a kind of a precursor to the return of Jesus. It could be the two witnesses, Tim and how you say, see um, the end times. <clears throat> so the day is coming. What should, what should we know? Destruction and judgment are coming. Live by faith and the righteousness. The righteous are named in the book of life. Last book of the Old Testament, the last book of the New. Nothing impure will have ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, like the treasured possessions. They want to be part of God's kingdom forever. Those that are destructive, He doesn't want to be his kingdom, in His kingdom forever. Those that are jewels, He does. So the post-exilic prophets, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, first of all, get back to the worship of God. Quit being selfish. Quit focusing on your own house, but get back to the worship of God. Build His. And it, you can, we can take application of that. I mean, obviously, we're not building today the, the temple, the actual physical temple. I, it probably will be rebuilt in, in the future, perhaps not too distant. But we are to be building his kingdom <clears throat> back to worship, focusing on God, having our priorities in the right place. Stay faithful to that God and be God's treasure with him forever. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for just the opportunity to look at your word and the last uh, few books of the Old Testament. Father, as we, we get this whole story a picture of what you did with the old covenant. Uh, we just pray that, that you would um, apply it to our lives. Help us to, to walk out um, those things that apply in the new covenant that Jeremiah spoke of, where the, the law is written on our hearts. Father, I pray for our priorities. I pray that you would be with us as we, we focus on worship of you, um, even in this time of difficulty where we're supposed to keep social distancing and help us in, our, in the reality of still witnessing for you in whatever way we can. Um, Father, I pray that you would uh, be with us as we walk this difficulty out and be um, uh, strengthening us both uh, spiritually, physically. Uh, help us to help those that need help. Uh, we pray that your, your protection on those that are vulnerable uh, we also pray uh, for an opening for the, the time when we can again gather as a church. And we thank you for 
of who you are. We thank you that you are God. We thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.